In today's video, I'm gonna talk about my first impressions of the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Now, I love the Osmo Pocket. This isn't my first Osmo Pocket. I actually have the original Osmo Pocket right here, and as you can see, it's got some battle damage. It's also missing some of the pieces, but I absolutely loved this camera gimbal. And I ended up skipping the DJI Osmo 2 because what the Pocket 3 ended up being is what I was hoping they would do with the Osmo Pocket 2. I specifically bought the base version. So it just comes with the Osmo Pocket 3 and it also comes with this little extension that lets you mount it to tripods and whatnot. But I'm gonna go over the good, the bad, and which is mostly good, but there are a few things that irked me with the Osmo Pocket 3 that I think a lot of the creators definitely jumped over uh, in trying to get everyone's video out before the embargo. So just so you could see, here's the Osmo Pocket and the Osmo Pocket 3. Now, if you put them next to each other, you could tell the Osmo Pocket 3 is considerably bigger. However, it is a one inch sensor versus really a smartphone, GoPro, action camera type sensor in here. This can get you image quality that's much closer to a mirrorless camera where the Osmo Pocket 1 and 2 resemble an action camera or a smartphone camera. So that's definitely the big advantage with this, not to mention the low light you're gonna get out of this one inch sensor. So here we are at the beach where it is definitely a little bit windier. There's a lot more noise going on. So I wanna show you what it sounds like without voice isolation in DaVinci Resolve. And then here is with voice isolation. As you can see, it definitely helps uh, if you're gonna go vlogging in noisier environments. So when it comes to the video quality of the DJI Osmo 3, we definitely have improved image quality. We have a little bit more of a shallow depth of field, which we can't really dial down from F2. You can use um, ND filters. I don't have the ND filters yet. Freewell is sending some out. But until then, we are using automatic you know, settings in order to get the right exposure, just to see how things look. When it comes to usability of the Osmo Pocket 3, it's definitely much easier to use than the prior Osmo Pockets. Not just with the way that you flick around the screen in order to change settings, but the screen itself is extremely bright and it's much bigger than the prior Osmo Pocket, which means it's not just for framing or whatnot, just to actually see, but you can also get a pretty good judge on how everything looks by just using the internal screen versus kind of winging it, kind of how we had to do with the original Osmo Pocket. After using this Osmo for the past few days, if you're gonna use this and try to vlog with it, although the internal microphones are okay and we'll do some testing later on in the video, you're definitely gonna need some kind of wireless mic kit. Now, the reason I didn't go for the creator combo from DJI is it only comes with the one transmitter and you can't use it with any of your other cameras because there's no receiver right now, although there will be in the future. So I wanted to be able to use a wireless combo that I have that I can use with my other cameras because on a day like today, I have my other bag with me and uh, right here and I bring my FX30 and I got a lens. So I wanna be able to have one mic system that I could use with both cameras and using this full name system lets me do that. The audio is pretty decent and it actually hooks up to the Osmo Pocket via its USB-C and so I don't have to bring an auxiliary cord to be able to make this thing work. I'm actually using it on an extension pole that's uh, actually in a Falcam F38 extension pole so I could use it with my actual mirrorless cameras as well since I have the F38 bottom on there. So in order to get the right framing, I'm still having to use a pole so holding it, though, let me give you an example of holding it. If I was gonna hold the Osmo, I could hold it out about this far, which I guess is similar in aiming, but you see my arm a lot easier. If I have it out like this, I have it about as far, but it doesn't look like I'm actually holding the camera far out. Now, if I wanna hold the camera far out, this is the field of view I can get, which is obviously even wider. However, I'm really gonna hold it more here. So holding the pole just gives you a more natural look and it doesn't look like, you know, you're holding the camera out as much as, you know, <laughs> this does uh, when I do it like this. Now, one thing I was happy to see DJI add in a firmware update is now, when you're filming in log or HLG, when you switch to those color profiles, there's a little yellow 10-bit icon that shows with choosing the profile. So at least now you know you are in the 10-bit mode and you can only film in the 10-bit mode if you're in HLG or D-Log. When it comes to live streaming, that's one thing that I was really excited to do with this 
And at least when it comes to YouTube, there's some hurdles you have to jump through. I did a live stream actually talking about it once I got it to work that I'll put a link in the description below. But basically, if you're gonna live stream on YouTube, you have to have access to the desktop version of YouTube and it's not super easy to actually get that to work on your phone. Being able to rotate the LCD screen to quickly turn off the Osmo is pretty cool. You can also hold the record button for a little bit and it will power the camera off as well. The autofocus in this thing is incredibly improved compared to what we saw on the Osmo Pocket. I'll actually show you a few clips. Uh, a few days ago, I took actually at this park over here, and uh, I did a test between the Osmo Original Pocket and the Osmo Pocket 3. Now, I wanted to do more tests, but actually, my kid sister ended up breaking my original Osmo a few days later. So I just have the tests in the 24P modes, but I just wanted to show you what they look like compared to each other, because the Osmo has come a long way in a few years so let's take a look at that footage so i have the original osmo pocket here on the left in cine like d with the maximum bit rate and then i'm shooting 10 bit video on the osmo pocket 3. now there's going to be a lot more latitude not just because we're shooting d log m but because we are filming in 10 bit in addition to d log m so we're able to get more out of the grade without kind of ruining the image Lastly, I want to leave you with a comparison of the Osmo Pocket 3 against my FX30 because the Sony FX30 paired with the 11mm 1.8 is pretty much the smallest I've been able to get a high quality mirrorless camera on a setup just like the Osmo Pocket 3. Now I'm sure you could see in that video that there is a little bit of an image quality difference, especially because that was an 11mm f1.8 on a mirrorless camera. But when it comes to just casually vlogging, it is much easier to have this all-in-one camera because the footage is definitely much steadier than holding the FX30 on this camera setup. I mean, even the FX30 was at standard stabilization where this is gimbal stabilized, so it is pretty freaking stable. And then on top of that, of course, I got the all-in-one mic set up right behind the Osmo Pocket, keeping it nice and compact. The reason I wanted to compare the FX30 versus the Osmo Pocket is when it's just camera versus camera, they're somewhat similar in sizes, although the Osmo Pocket is slightly smaller. But not only is the Osmo Pocket slightly smaller, it does have that gimbal built into it, which will give you this super, super stable footage. And I've actually shot with the FX30, like this, riding my bike, using the Crane M2S gimbal. And it was relatively easy to use, but that is a camera and a gimbal at that point, where this is a camera gimbal, and I'm getting relatively smooth motion. Uh, I'm not having to worry too much about aiming myself, and it seems to be somewhat keeping me in the frame. So I can worry about biking and not worry as much about the vlogging aspect, make sure I'm not gonna run into anything, anyone, uh, and not hurt myself. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope I was able to uh, spread some knowledge out there. If you learned anything, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos from the channel, especially if you wanna see more Osmo Pocket 3 content, which there is going to be plenty of that content coming up on the channel here soon. I'll be doing some more comparisons. I'll be doing a proper full review because this is really more of a first impressions review, getting to actually use the camera, put it through its paces, more than we'd actually be able to uh, find out from the uh, original videos. Now, I'm ending this video on a more shaded area uh, just so we can see how it handles the dynamic range, but we'll end on this cool little statue behind me.
Until next time, my name's Chef Fagan. Thank you for watching as always, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.